What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talk of the Tundra, your Green Bay Packers podcast that is a proud partner of the Euroset Podcast Network and the Blue Wire family. As always, I am your host, Numak, coming to you after a brief hiatus, taking a little break after the season, but we're back giving out grades to the Packers offense this week. Got a classes out of session. Everyone took their finals. Had a uh, disappointing result. On, uh, no, no curve for the uh, for the class in that final. But alas, here to grade these tests with me is Jordan Tresky. Jordan, how are you doing, buddy? Doing well, doing well. Our uh, congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs for knocking off those phonies, the San Francisco 49ers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The uh, the talk of the NFL sphere the past week was the fact that the 49ers didn't know the overtime rules. They didn't know them, and then they said they did. And then the like I know a liar when footage, I see one. Then the behind the scenes <laughs> footage to prove that they didn't know the know the rules, which is crazy, admittedly. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, congrats to the Chiefs back to back. Uh. Super Bowl champions, first time since the ori- the first two Brady uh, rings back in 03 and 04, which is crazy, honestly, just simply nuts. That is, wait, there were no, that, you're right. That was okay. I, for some reason, I thought it was 01, but then I remember it was a couple. 01, 02 Super Bowl. Oh, sorry. No, I'm wrong. It is the 03 Pats team. 04 Super Bowl, that was over the Panthers. And then mm. 04 Pats team, 05 Super Bowl over the Philadelphia Eagles. Got it, got it, got it, got it. I remember th- I remember that uh, that 04 season when the Eagles went to the uh, Super Bowl because that was the 4th and 22 year. Uh, that was not that year. That was not that year? It was the year before. Really? Yeah, because Terrell Owens was on that team. And then he played in the Super Bowl on a broken leg. And I believe had like <laughs> he had an insane I know this is not what people came here for, but I'm just gonna say uh what um Terrell Owens performance in his only Super Bowl performance, I believe. I would think that's right. Yeah, he had nine pe- catches for hundred and twenty two yards. On a broken leg. He played with a broken fibula. Like he's like he's Greg Jennings, literally. Wow. Mhm. I w- I was right. That is not the first Brady Super Bowl. Because yes, because I I was I was right about being wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was his second and third <laughs> rings in the o four o five Super Bowls after getting his first against the Rams in. For the 2001 season, mm-hmm. there we go. I we figured it out. There but like I said earlier, we are here to give out some grades to the Packers offense, just like we did last year. We're going to start with the uh, with the line, and then go to the, rec- the tight ends, receivers, running backs, and finish up with everyone's favorite quarterback, Jordan Love. So let's start with the line, Jordan. Um, We'll get the incompletes out of the way early. Uh, Caleb Jones, for me, is an incomplete because he didn't play, I think, at all or enough for us to get a grade on him. And then, unfortunately, David Bakhtiari, also an incomplete. Because yes. only played one game. Had a really good one game. Graded out very well. <laughs> but, uh, obviously, did not end the way he or Packers fans wanted it to, uh, to end. So, let's go across the line. Um, outside in. Let's start with uh, Rasheed Walker. What did you give Rasheed Walker for, ah, uh, yes. for a grade? I would th- I would say probably the hardest lineman to grade this year because he had a very turbulent start. Obviously, a lot of eyes on him when the news of David Bakhtiari uh, not being able to return, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> this season um broke and all the you know what are they going to do and then the rotation was between him and yash nyman she walker i mean there was times where rishi walker obviously on merit performance kind of lost his job and yash nyman filled in as, as a stopgap 
But by the end of the year, Rasheed Walker was very serviceable. Not even just that. I think he was very impactful in terms of I mean, no sacks on Jordan Love in the playoff games. That does have to mean something. Um, so I kind of went, might be a little harsh, but given the totality of his performance, I went C+. plus. Interesting. So I thought he had a good season. Like I thought I did too. for being thrown into the 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 place he was being thrown into, not coming into the year as the starter, having to be the starter after David Bakhtiari goes down, um, allowed six sacks and had ten penalties um um I guess called against him. He had more penalties called against him, but I only counted the ones that were um accepted essentially. The ones that yeah. had negative results for for the Packers so yeah 10 penalties six sacks allowed um I think he got better as the year went went along I ultimately gave a B like I I he looked better like I said as the season went along and I think winning the job from Yash Nyman a player who had already had starting experience on the line was enough for me to like give him a good bump like he proved that he could he could hold up pretty well. And like you said, no sacks in the playoffs and just ended the year strong. Yeah. What it, you, I, I, it, it's, it, I think it's, it's one of those things where it's like, and really we're going to have a lot of players that kind of meet this criteria for various reasons, even our beloved quarterback where you just, you can't discount like how things were ugly. Not necessarily because it was Rasheed Walker's fault. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There was just a lot of mess that you had to get through. And considering that there were times where it's like, okay, we're gonna go to Yash Nyman not because of just rotation. It was like there were times where Rasheed Walker was flat out bench. Mm-hmm. And that didn't apply for the entire season. But Perhaps it was a little too harsh of a grade, but I think it's it. You know, you can't ignore those things, and I I feel like a lot of I could probably say this about three or four offensive players in particular, but I I do feel like Rasheed Walker was probably one of the most improved players on this team by far. I mean, that just kind of stands out. I also but. want to give a important piece of context that I forgot to mention at the beginning of this. Um, I gave my grades based on expectations coming into the season. Like, did you or did you not live up to expectations? Did you or did you not improve upon the last time we saw you? Was kind of how I went about this. Because in a similar way that Ty and Rohan and you guys and you and you and Adam do buck stocks and IPO and everything and like their IPOs every year, it matters more. For example, like Aaron Jones, like how did he perform in relation to what an average Aaron Jones season should be? Like you're, you're graded yeah. on what you're expected to do. That's how I graded it versus just like taking a single season result and comparing it to all the other players in the NFL. So gotcha. I, think, I think, I do think that will apply to one player in particular. And we'll get to him fairly soon. Yep. Um. So <laughs> C plus for you on, uh, on Rashid Walker and a B for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Next up is Zach Tom. I gave Zach Tom um, an A. I gave him Same. Uh, two sacks allowed all year long. Um, and an interesting bit of research when we were looking up stats and doing, um, looking at trying to determine all these grades. Uh, Trent Williams of the Niners. I told you this in, in uh, our DMs, but Trent Williams did not allow a sack the entire year, which is crazy. Crazy. <laughs> That's including playoffs. And it's including playoffs too. Like, that's yeah. absolutely bonkers. Though his Super Bowl performance is not particularly great. No. 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 But still. But still. Um, but yeah, only three penalties against them all year long. Like I think Zach Tom is quickly becoming one of the more important pieces on this on this offensive line, given that he can play guard, he can play tackle, he can play really wherever you need him to play, and he's playing it at a darn good level at that. Like he had he graded out well. Um as a pass rusher, uh, as a run blocker, it wasn't so like super duper good, but as a right tackle, 
being thrown there. I guess I don't say out of necessity, but pretty much out of necessity because they had John Runyon Jr. and uh, Elton Jenkins at the guard spots. They needed somebody else outside. I think he did quite well. Yeah, versatility, um, health. That's been very important for him. Um, Best of he ability, was my ability. Exactly. He was my breakout guy to start the year, and even I couldn't have a vision him kind of being probably the most easily the most stable lineman mm-hmm. on the unit. Um, yeah, I, I think he's just he's just a really good football player, and it you're gonna get an A. But it's, it's simple when you kind of put those two two together. Yeah, when you're uh, when you're doing things like that and you're really uh exceeding expectations like he did yeah without a doubt you're gonna be uh doing better than anticipated and getting good grades for it um Mm -hmm. i lied he had a very good run blocking grade rasheed walker was the one that did not rasheed walker had a average mediocre kind of borderline run blocking grade but did quite well um pass blocking so there is that let's move inside um let's start with elton jenkins what did you give him leave a minus i gave him an a uh zero sacks allowed had good grades from pff across the board and uh five penalties um assessed against them so like him and him and zach tom to me had a very similar year dominant year and just i think zach tom or i'm sorry i think elton jenkins missed two or three games i forget how many he missed but he missed a good chunk of games but um when AJ Dillon, I think, rolled up on his ankle or knee. Two and a half, if yeah. you count the Falcons. The Falcons game. one. So, yeah, I was happy with Elton Jenkins' year coming off of his injury and uh, just pleased to see him do as well as he did, as well as just be available for almost all of the games. Missing two at no fault of his own. Yeah. His highest pass blocking grade. Um, for a full year, he had a higher grade for the injury, his first injury, or his only injury year um, in 2021. Um, I thought that was very interesting. His run blocking grades, honestly, Zach Tom was the, the shining star of the entire Packers offensive line t- in terms of run blocking grades per PFF. Mm-hmm. That kind of tracks given how the Packers run off his <laughs> most of the year outside of Aaron Jones yeah. becoming Superman. So. Oh, no, I thought just the fact that Elton Jenkins, again, this is, he's an all-pro level offensive lineman. And I thought, to your point, I thought him and Zach Tom really stabilized an offensive line that had some shaky moments, more so earlier in the year as things were, you know, trying to get stabilized and figured out. Yep. Um, I realized we forgot to tackle. I, I moved inside too quickly to to talk about Ellen Jenkins. We forgot Yash Nyman. We didn't mm. give him grades. Uh, I gave Yash Nyman either a C- minus or a D plus. I was torn on what I wanted to give him, but I You're think... You're doing the gladiator with him? Yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm... I think I'm yeah. D plus. Yeah. Um, I did C- minus for what it's worth. Two sacks allowed in just, un- or just over 100 pass blocking snaps. That's not good. Uh, two two penalties and 13 pressures allowed, like I said, in those just over 100 pass blocking uh, snaps. Like you had said, Rashid Walker was pulled at times in favor of Yash Nyman, but I remember plenty of times during the season where I just saw Yash Nyman get absolutely blown up and it hurt a play. Like, I, Yash Nyman's one of the ones where the eye test kind of was enough for me to give him a grade. I didn't really need to do a deep dive on his on his season to really understand that hey not the best season from yash probably won't be back next year like i i think I, it yeah i don't i don't, I don't think, think there's so. any any sort of chance he's back next year i mean at this point they'll get a compensatory pick for him do they yeah because the they signed him for this year as an exclusive or the um probably not be saying this live on a podcast because i need to be a professional packers but um 
Um, it's the, it's what they did with Lazard. Oh, okay. Exclusive phrase and whatever yeah. acronym it is. Yeah. yeah. And what they'll do with Emmanuel Wilson probably too. Boo. Not that I'm, not, I'm just saying in the sense that like, yeah. <laughs> boo. <laughs> I just say in the sense that they'll be, because they signed him to that contract last year and it was only, or they tendered him that contract last year. It was only a, you know, a one year deal and most likely it'll be out on the door because, you know, this didn't perform. Well, and come draft time, they might be getting a left tackle. So, or some offensive line help. Yeah. Something like that. No, we'll, we'll get into draft stuff pretty soon here as the combines at the end of the month. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how, to see how that shakes out for sure. Very interesting. Uh, back inside. Let's pick up with John Runyon Jr. I gave him a C. Two, exactly what I gave him. Two sacks allowed, lackluster grades, and six penalties. He wasn't the worst lineman on, like, like starting lineman, in my opinion. But he didn't show me anything um, of, of significance to really be enthused about his performance all year long. Yeah, I always just kind of thought he was like a nice or like serviceable starter. And I still think that's the case. It's just there's no wow factor. I thought the rotation with him and Sean Ryan by the end of the year was very interesting. I think even Sean Ryan got some playoff snaps if memory serves correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not – and I know he had this very emotional and passionate speech about like what it meant to be be playing for the – Green Bay Packers, who he also has a lot of, if he's not a free agent, he has contractual stuff that may, you know, he may be leaving Green Bay, or it's most likely that he's leaving Green Bay. Um, but yeah, I just thought he's a fine player, but there was nothing really kind of just like, you know, you see with Elton Jenkins, you see with Zach Tom, you see like that's what that's supposed to look like. And John Runyon Jr. can do a, a serviceable job he can look the part but it's not to the degree of you know um all pro or pro bowl uh, pro bowl but whatever that means um right. just kind of oh a, a strong link on the on the offensive line well i think pro bowl in and of itself is a is a badge of honor for linemen because it gets you recognized by fans like all Absolutely. pro is obviously important to guys too because you're getting it's getting voted on by people that know the game inside and out and is a a good value um assessor when it comes to how well of a year you had but i think if you're a pro bowl level lineman you're getting noticed by fans for for good reason like that's why the really only dominant guys make the pro bowl like that's there's a purpose for that and so yeah like I, i agree with you like he's serviceable but as much as it is to be a wow lineman, like John Ronnie Jr. just never really had that, never really showcased like pancake blocks or really surprised me with how well he was run blocking or anything like that. Yeah. PFF grades here are very just like mediocre. They're just fine. Mild. Yeah. yeah. It's 57.7 uh, run blocking grade, 59.3 pass blocking grade on, yep. or sorry, that was Yash Nyman. 53.2 run blocking grade, 62.4 pass blocking grade on right. 1,009 snaps. Yeah. But he was available yeah. here, which was good because they needed him. Yeah. Um, Sean Ryan, did you give him a, a grade? I did. I gave him a C plus. I was more harsh. <laughs> I just I, said D plus. Uh, he had really bad grades, but... He like when he like played, he played well. He had no sacks allowed, only eight pressures. Um, do you have a snap count up? Uh, yes, believe it is 229, which like isn't terrible. No, it's definitely not as many as a thousand, but in 200 snaps, you don't give up a uh. You don't give up a uh, a sack. I'm I'm fine with that, frankly. It's like I said, it wasn't like super duper great or anything. That's why I gave us what I could say. I gave us C plus or C minus. C plus. 
Like I just thought he was uh, also a... all those all those snaps were from week nine onward, including playoffs. Right. I think it was Andy Herman who had talked about how like um anytime Sean Ryan got into a game, like that drive they score a touchdown, which I don't know. That's obviously not that's that's correlation, not causation kind of thing for the most part. <laughs> um But yeah, like eight pressures allowed, no sacks. Had 16 uh, snaps at left guard, 213 at right guard mostly, filling in for John Ronan Jr. at times. So, yeah, I'm not inspired, but I'm not dissuaded either. Like, I think this was, wasn't he suspended last year for yes, he was. for PEDs? Yeah. So, after a year of this is his, being this away is from his the game. Re- it was really his first year as playing. Right. And so, again... My context, my grades is how did you perform coming in with expectations? I didn't really expect anything from Sean Ryan, aka like a C. Gave him a C plus because if you're not, if you didn't hurt the team at all, or hurt the quarterback at all, I should say, in 200 snaps, not too bad. But that's with context that I didn't watch every single Sean Ryan snap to see if he was like actually causing detrimental plays with his poor blocking or anything like that. So. Um, am I missing anybody? I want to make sure I don't move move too fast to our last guy. I think we're going to work through everybody. Um, Josh Myers, the center. What did you give him? C. I gave him a C minus. The, uh, six accepted penalties, five sacks allowed. He was, uh, that's the fifth worst in the NFL for a center. Like, getting... Letting up five sacks into an interior defensive lineman as a center, like, I, it's just not ideal, frankly. And it was pretty obvious throughout the entire season that they just needed more from a center position. Like, everybody on Twitter talked about it. The media talked about it. I think Brian Gutekunz, Matt LaFleur, and Adam Stenovich all said that at one point in the season, Josh Myers was playing the best football of his career. And either this quote, it wasn't really translating, frankly, like it just, it just didn't. And so, yeah, I, I'm not really, I'm kind of ready to be done with the, uh, the Josh Myers experience. He had the most snaps on the team. I don't think he missed a snap. Yeah, he didn't miss a snap, but 54 offensive grade, 53 run blocking, 55 pass blocking. He had 28 pressures, which is just not good. Especially as your center. Yeah. yeah. Especially as your center. That's, your, that's the, the, by mathematical elimination, that is the crux of your offensive line of just not just snapping the ball, but like mm-hmm. holding up, a, you know, with interior defensive linemen. Yeah. IDLs. So, yeah, I. Josh Meyer, it's it's very similar to jo- John Runyon, frankly, but it's just a more important position and one that, yep. frankly, you know, is kind of underrated in terms of just, like, how important it is. Mm-hmm. It's very important to have someone that's very capable of snapping the ball and be on a uh, rhythm with your quarterback, which, yep. again, during the turbulent times of this year, there were a lot of moments where it's like, we're a jo- like, are Jordan Love and Josh Myers on the same page? That's it's not even just about what he's physically with physically being able to withstand against opposing at um, pass rushers in the middle. Right. Um, so yeah, that we know what we can get from Josh Myers. I'd be very interested again, just to tease the draft. I'd be very interested if there's any movement in that capability because of just, you know, we know Zach Tom is a capable center and, if you're looking to upgrade a position, yeah, you might yeah. be you might be looking at more than one position to upgrade. But Josh Myers is not, I, you know, I don't think he's necessarily a lock. No, God, no. I would hope he isn't. Honestly, like I would hope he isn't either. I, but we, yeah. Like I had mentioned, twenty-eight pressures. That's eleventh worst in the NFL amongst um, uh, tackles who had. I'm sorry, we do fiftieth or I for. Some of my grades, Jordan, I qualified it out for like 50% of 
the minimum block. You did it compared to late league average. Yeah. Amongst you were seeing where these guys rank up to yep. their counterparts. Correct. Eleventh worst in the NFL, twenty eight pressures. Um I'm trying to find his um sacks a lot, which I think I said like was fifth. It was so. uh five. Yes, five allowed, fifth also worse than the NFL. So, like, it's just, it just needs to be better, frankly. That's really all there is to it. Um, there are a lot of good centers out there. As When it comes to, like, pass blocking grade, he had uh, the 18th worst. Or, I'm sorry, 18th best, but it's about, it's about average. 31 minus 13 is 13th worst amongst 31 uh, centers. So your best center was Ryan Kelly from the Colts, um, who played in 14 Ryan games. Kelly. So, like, for context, his offensive run blocking and pass blocking grades were 77, 75, and 78, as opposed to um, Josh Myers' 54, 53, 55. So that's, like, the gap we're talking about in terms of just, like, grades from guys who watch the game. Obviously, yeah. with context, you guys know this already, but... It's all with a grain of salt, the grades are. But I think on the whole, for the season, they're a pretty good way to look at how a player performed. So Mm -hmm. that does it for the offensive linemen. Shall we move on to the tight ends? Let's do it. Who would you like to talk about first? Obviously one of the rookies, unless you wanted to go in least important order but i'm Um, I'm willing to take your input to be fair i i gave the grade to ben sims as unqualified as in he played too few snaps or was very just like he was just an extra pass blocker there wasn't really much that he did that i I would say i did give him a grade you did give him a grade well you're more braver than i am ben sims braver Ben, to be fair, Ben Sims finished the year with four catches on six targets for 21 receiving yards. He did have a passing or a receiving touchdown. Yeah. Credit to him. That's but... what I'm saying. He, he played in 16 games. He played. Oh, uh, why can't I find snap count? Why don't they show it to me? Show me the snap count. Nope, it just won't. Oh, pass snaps. Here we go. He played he had 212. Snaps. In for yeah, 212. Just snaps total? No, that's... Yeah, that's total snaps. How okay. how many snaps did he play as a receiver? Uh... Yeah, we checked the key for this. He ran 54 routes. He okay. Is, and he was in on 78 uh, passing plays. So, like... That feels like a cutoff. Yeah. I'd say, like... Again, it's not necessarily a make-or-break thing. I gave him a... Um, I gave him a C. We picked him up halfway through the year, right? Or when did, he, when did we pick up Ben Sims? It was at the start of the year. It was at the start of the year. So, eh, I'm not really too concerned. He had five receptions on six targets, 25 total yards. Like, he was mostly just, like, that end zone threat. Like, this, like the short reception kind of guy. I'm not really too concerned with getting, giving him a grade, honestly. Like, I think he deserved a C. Nothing super... Uh, Nothing super inspiring, but he wasn't a detriment, honestly. Like, I don't think he caused any harm to the team. I wasn't like, oh, Ben Sims, you... There was one route I remember very specifically that either Luke Musgrave, I think it was early in the year, I want to say it was the Raiders game, because I that was when I was probably my most frustrated with this Packers team. It was during the Raiders game where they took Luke Musgrave out and they ran a route for the tight end on a third critical third down play. And Ben Sims, he tried. I'm not going to blame him for trying. But he ran the route, and the ball was a little overthrown, but catchable, I would say. And Ben Sims could not do anything with it. And I thought that was not necessarily a choice of Ben Sims. I thought it was a bad choice to be, hey, we're going to rotate personnel out. Let's get the guy that you know is kind of more of our big blocker guy instead of our dynamic tight end that we have been using a lot of the offense and you know for what it's worth he doesn't have a drop (laughs) registered on a season 
Yeah, I, I, again, and, I think it was more... And he had the second best pass blocking grade on Team Four Tight End. He was a very good pass blocker. Very yeah. good pass blocker. He, he had 152 pass blocking snaps. 18 pass blocking... I'm sorry. He had 152 blocking snaps, 18 pass blocking, 134 run blocking. Ben Sims eats religiously at IHOP. He he ser- <laughs> he's serving out pancakes. God, okay? <laughs> I get it. I get it. I understand. Um, I just thought that there was a bunch there. Yeah, no, that blocking. that's that's fine. Like I said, I th- I thought he played well enough to to warrant uh, a green. So that was just. That was just my take on it, Jordan. That's all. Uh, Josiah DeGora. I did not agree. <laughs> I gave him a D. I gave him a D. Yeah. For the for this, this, the the reason of expectations, right? Like I really, really. Yeah, but that was, okay. If I if I could push back, you could. I feel like I I'm just saying, based on expectations, I feel like. Out of any carryover player that we have seen play for the Packers the last couple of years, I feel like Josiah DeGuara had the lowest approval rating possibly of a Packers player I've seen in a while. I mean, he's not a... Rogers. See, but the thing though is like, he's not as like impactful as that because it's just I mean, you might it's a special teamers, but it's important to hold on to the ball when you're trying to start the offense, which Marty Rogers simply could not do. But Josiah DeGuara was like this small cog in a huge kind of machine. And anytime you saw him, like there would be moments that he, you know, he plays with some intensity, but there, but there'd be moments where you're just like, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> right. So that's Wait. why I'm just saying, if you're, if you're basing off expectations, I feel like, what expectations were there to base off? Well, he That's was he, for for my expectations idea. He was the veteran tight end coming into the group, like coming into the season, right? That's was fair. was there an opportunity for him to carve out a role with two rookie tight ends um, on the team? There yeah. might have been. There, I think there was ample opportunity for him to prove himself in camp that he could be the guy. Not I'm not the guy, but start over two rookies right and when luke musgrave goes down we saw a whole lot more tucker craft and not a whole lot more desire to guara like no. that was kind of the idea is that they never really trusted him enough to give him an opportunity like it went from luke musgrave is the starter tucker craft is like the blocker tight end and then mix in ben sims here and there a little bit Josiah DeGuire was never in the mix to be a solid part of this offense. And no. I think it says a lot about his ability and about, like, just his... I don't want to say his ability is too all-encompassing. It says a lot about his his focus and his... I don't want to say his drive, because I don't want to call it work ethic, but just his capability to provide a, a boost to an offense, you know? Like, it just, it just wasn't anything special it wasn't anything to applaud him for and he's had long enough time in this offense to make a difference and he just didn't and that that was my that was my thing he had i forget is this this is third year or fourth year this is fourth right same draft class as jordan love asia dylan that should be enough time to really make a difference on a team and he absolutely did not no, I would go as far. I'm not usually this harsh on players. They're way more talented than I am. I will never be an NFL player. Clearly, I'm doing a podcast about an NFL team. Yo. <laughs> but does Josiah DeGuara make a 53-man roster by the start of the next NFL season? I don't think so. Probably practice. He's probably a practice squad guy. Yep. It's not over for him completely, but I think that's that's what we're talking about here. It's not... Someone that you would say is worthy of a of an NFL uh, roster spot going right. into the start of next season, and that's my point: is that he didn't he didn't do anything to make his case anything better than a D. Like he wasn't yeah. a, a true detriment at, as like an F grade would have been, but he just wasn't good. 
And yeah. my expectation for him coming into the season is that he would have built upon some kind of progress he had last year with an opportunity to be one of the better players um, in in the offense. Or I guess, yeah, I guess in the scheme of the offense, having experienced that the floor offense since he was drafted and make a difference and beat out a rookie. He couldn't beat out two rookies. That's That's the biggest thing. He could be a three. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that, that that's one of the them was a, one of them was a guy that they signed that got waived and they the picked street. up at the start of the season. Yeah. They they UDFA. They so realized they needed a they needed four tight ends, Jordan. Four. We uh, were at one point when I forget who it was, we were talking about maybe Desire Aguero being cut because they needed to elevate Bo Melton. Yeah. It was it was around that time and it was at like the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, and then because yeah. they all their so, guys come up at IR. They had um they had Musgrave come off of IR, they had Emmanuel Wilson come off of IR, and then uh Bull Mountain come off of IR. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, up from practice practice squad. Up from, and they needed yeah. a big room on the roster. Yep. For the fifty three man roster. And yeah, that's if you're thinking about getting cut after being beat up by three rookies in your own position, and you might be the the roster casualty because you couldn't there's a, there's another rookie beating you out somewhere else and being a better asset. Not a good grade. We gave a lot of time to Josiah Deguara. <laughs> As I I had no, I would not have thought otherwise. I had for some of that I didn't even grade. I had strong feelings, clearly. <laughs> um, all right, it, to the two rookies. I will let's start Tucker Craft. What'd you give Tucker Craft? B minus. I gave a B. I gave a B. I thought his end of the year really, really uh, boosted his his grade for me. Like the way he filled in for Luke Musgrave was to call it awe inspiring is a little bit too heavy, but just like he got the job done. That's really what he did. He just did his he he chopped wood, carry water, Jordan. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he had oh, yeah. uh, I'm trying to find 36 receptions on 48. Uh, targets and three touchdowns on the year. Plus, he could stay on his feet. I thought that was a very important. Yeah. I also thought, um, never mind the lasting images of his year where you know he's struggling to block Nick Bosa in the divisional game. I thought he was really good as a pass blocker. Mm-hmm. They, they, the run game really solidified when Tucker Craft got more snaps. And yep. it was getting stuff off the edge. It was, you know, just having him in that role and more snaps because Luke Musgrave got hurt. I thought he filled in admirably. I thought it was very apparent how him and Jordan Love were in sync with one another. That helped Jordan Love in mm-hmm. key spots. Yeah. Again, another guy you could say if you're just talking about this time capsule of this Packers team, you could say, I thought Tucker Craft was not going to have a much of a significant contribution to this team. And he goes on to be one of, not like, I wouldn't say the top five office player in this unit, but really just kind of did a little bit of everything. And I thought he was one of the most improved players. Again, I'm going to just keep repeating myself because we can see that about a lot of guys, but yeah. I, yeah, it's hard not to be very tantalized by what he could bring to this team moving forward. Yeah, I think the idea that we had talked about at length throughout the season and even before it was that Luke Musgrave was the tight end ready now. Tucker Craft was the project that would be ready in a couple of years. And I think you saw glimpses of that a lot this uh, this season. He can block quite well. He had his run blocking grade is weirdly not good. It's 48 and his pass blocking grade is uh, 70, only on 45 snaps for pass blocking, 326 for run blocking. But I think he just he you, you can tell he can block, like you he, yeah. he you can tell that he can he can hold his own out there. And once he gets stronger and is in a weight room for more than a year, like he is going to get better. And mm-hmm. I think you can really tell his his receiving has potential. Like I'd mentioned, he had um. 379 yards on 36 catches, three touchdowns, but he just, he had a lot of, uh, 
a lot of good receptions. His longest of the year is 43 yards. I'm, I'm excited for, for Tucker Craft. I think going forward, the two tight end sets that the Packers are going to roll out are probably going to be um, pretty good. So, I would say so. Luke Musgrave, last tight end. What would you give him? I went C+. Plus. I was mulling either incomplete or a B minus. Which was which is which sounds weird, I know. He played in thirteen. I was just saying those are very those are two very different grades. He played in he played in (laughs) thirteen games. Um had forty catches on fifty two targets and two touchdowns for four hundred and eighteen yards. I think I'll just lean giving him a C or a a B minus. But I, or I'm sorry, what did I, did I give him? Yeah, B minus. Yeah, you said B minus. I think he showed flashes, but was inconsistent. Does that make sense? Like, I think Tucker Craft had a better year while being, I guess, more polished. It almost looked like what we had thought was going to happen this season with. Musgrave being the ready now tight end and Tucker Craft being the project. By the end of the year, I think those roles flip flopped. Like I think we saw oh. Tucker Craft be the more polished tight end who's capable of catching balls and is a capable blocker, as opposed to Luke Musgrave who looks like Bambi running sometimes. Uh had some trouble running not running routes, but like I said, just staying on his feet. Is wasn't the best blocker. And just looked a little more raw than the Tucker Craft did. So, ultimately, I was happy with his year. Like he's, I think, like I said, they're gonna be good going forward. I just think it was an interesting. It was an interesting year for for, for Luke Musgrave. A lot of I don't want to say a lot of ups and downs, but it was like steps towards progress interrupted by plateaus of um, of ability, which might not make sense, but. I guess I'll rephrase that steps towards progress with extended periods of, of a plateau. Like he got better as the season went along and he came back from injury, but there wasn't ever like a consistent vertical slope of progression. It was like two or three steps up from the start of the year, not 19 steps up. No, I think that's right. I think, to me, it it's very simple. Where when he was before he got hurt, when he was his most impactful, we could easily say that the Packers' offense was its most disorganized, not useless, but ineffective. No, Jaden Reed was not close to kind of figuring things out, and the way that they ended up using him was not even close to being kind of ironed out either. Uh, it was everything was just very disjointed. And I thought as good as he was doing individually, it was not necessarily leading to winning. Not that it fell on Luke Musgrave's shoulders, but there was a, a kind of it felt like they were he was a little bit of a check down guy in some points when the passing offense wasn't just clicking and Jordan Love was struggling and all that stuff. To the kind of because they're always going to be compared to each other by simply just being the same draft class and be the same draft class, the same, same position. position, being like just the same guy essentially. I feel like they're very similar as people. Athletically, Luke Musgrave is clearly like it. You you fall in love with what he can do, just running routes, breaking out like his releases, like he moves just. He just glides on the field so effortlessly. Yep. He's putting everything together. And I think to your point, I think the biggest thing that everybody had about Tucker Craft is like, well, he played at a D2 school, uh, North Dakota State, right? I yep. think that's what it was. Yep. And you're constantly, well, can he meet that level of competition? That's a huge jump up and stuff like that. Whereas like Luke, Luke Musgrave, as great as he was in college and obviously led to him being – selected in the second round of the NFL draft like there were a lot of questions for him and he had injury concerns or or missed time at least which affects your development and stuff like that where 
I would say it is flipped where I view Tucker Craft as more polished than Luke Musgrave. I feel like yeah. Luke Musgrave, Luke Musgrave probably has the higher ceiling in terms of just, you know, there's things that he does athletically that Tucker Craft can't do. Yep. But, you know, he has more ways to reach those levels and unlock something in himself that, you know, Tucker Craft can kind of bring to the table more instantly. So I do commend him for coming back after, again, lacerating his kidney after a football landed, or he landed on a football. Um, But I did, I could not shake the feeling that when he looked his best, the Packers looked their, at their worst. Yep. That's about right. I totally agree with you there. All right. Shall we move on to the, uh, the receivers? I think yes. the most exciting group of the, uh, a lot of different grades. flavors, a lot of different flavors. Um, I'm going to start from perceived number one for the start of the season. Does that sound good. Hmm. So Christian oh, Watson. We're going, yeah, we're going right into it. <laughs> yep. I'm curious as to what you gave him. Let me look. I I am going to change my grade on the spot. Nope. What did you give him initially? Originally, I gave him a C. Okay. I think I would give him a D. How come? What? that? That's a pretty drastic it, drop. It's a really tough grade. And it's not helped by the fact that he missed a lot of time and missed a lot of snaps. Mm -hmm. He fell under the same umbrella of he played a lot of his snaps when the Packers offense was not good. Mm -hmm. And they really pigeonholed him as, hey, go long, buddy. Yep. (laughs) We'll try to (laughs) – we'll try to – you know, connect on a on a you know long pass and Jordan loves you know we talked about plenty of pods Jordan loves deep pass he was not a strong suit early in the year no nope. came around big time as this, the year went along Christian Watson benefited from that when he was healthy he's an impactful player it sucks that his year went the way it did because I was so looking forward to seeing how you'd you know connect with Jordan Love um as the two were kind of you know finally playing together but i think he's the only one that i really or the the most i had the highest expectations for pretty much of any packers player this year yep and it was just so and he can't help it that his hamstrings are clearly fine paper mache and glue not paper mache but it's like this it's like this tight string that the tighter you bring it you know, or like yep. piece it together. So anyway. he, he, here's where I want to interrupt, not interrupt, but here's where, where I want to ask you a critical question. You talked about all of those things. Yes. Why not? None of that in there to me is play oriented. Does that make sense? I understand that. I think we'll have the same conversation with Aaron Jones. To some degree. Okay. Because well yeah, on the on the inverse. Because Got it. because yeah, none of those things are are related to his play. But you can only I mean, I'm looking at it right now. He had um come on, let's load fast. What are you looking please. For? Um he had five hundred six snaps on the year. Mm-hmm. Dontavian Wicks had more snaps than him. There, there, between Romeo Dobbs had more snaps, Jay Reed had more snaps, Dontavian Wicks had more snaps. There was it like it feels like he missed a lot of time, but there was a lot more of Christian Watson that we saw this year than I feel like we, you kind of like would guess offhand like at the jump. And again, the when he was playing more was in the earlier part of the season when the offense was just not good. So that's where I would say play wise, as you can roll out the, the his numbers, individual numbers that really improved as the season went along. But I you know, the weeks of just hey, we're gonna throw it long to Chris Watson and see but I don't, right. 
I just don't think that's his fault, though. I don't think that's his fault, but it's ultimately what the final product was. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, I I think D is pretty harsh. Like he still had five touchdowns, thirty catches. I know that's what's crazy. See, like, but like, that's, in... that's the thing is like he also had six interceptions when thrown to him, which I know that you and I had at length discussion about, like that Christian Watson wasn't going up and like getting balls, right? Like he wasn't fighting yes. through a ball. A, a few of those, I'd say probably four of those six were underthrown balls from Jordan Love going deep. So uh, not yeah, his... I can remember that Raiders one. Yep. And the end of the one, the end of the, the uh, Steelers game, that one wasn't Christian Watson's fault. Yep. And so I here, here's my, my, my thought process for Christian Watson. I gave him yes. either a C or an incomplete. Because I felt like we just didn't see enough to really properly grade Christian Watson this year. Because he just was injured so much. I know he played in 11 games, but... I was just six snaps, though. I know, but what, what to me, what is more important than that is, is targets. He was pretty, True. pretty poor in targets. Only... Bull Melton, and Malik Heath, and Samari Toure. Do you had Kevin, fewer can targets? Can you? Sorry. So amongst. Sorry, I'm. Let's go ahead. I'm being very rude as you're making a point. Can you guess how many snaps Christian Watson had as a rookie? Total as a snaps. Rookie? He had how many this season? He had 500. 506 this year. Um. Snaps, or targets. Simple uh, snaps. Seven fifty. He had five hundred seven snaps. Of course he did. So he essentially had as many snaps as, he <laughs> as did a rookie and a sophomore. Right. And did do you have his stats from last year up? I can bring that up right now. So comparatively to to last year. When he still had hamstring injuries, he was still fighting through as the number one guy, trying to be at least. Yes. 30 catches and five touchdowns on 442 yards this year. What did he have last year? 41 catches on 66 targets, 611 receiving yards, seven touchdowns. So 200 more yards, two more touchdowns on six more catches-ish, right? So, I I just think, against expectations, I gave him a C because I don't think it was fair to give him a, a good grade or a bad grade because of just how mal- maligned he was by injuries this year. Like, it, it really was bad. Like, yeah. when he catches a ball in space and then uh, comes up lame because he hurt his hamstring, like, it, it it's just tough. Like, it was a tough year for Christian Watson. And I really didn't want to be harsh on him. Because, not that it matters one way or the other, but I just think that it wasn't his play that earned him the stats that he was missing and what we expected from this year. Like, if he had played a full year and had bad stats, we'd give him a bad grade. But he had such an inconsistent year health-wise, and... When he like was looking good, he looked fine. I think what really hurt Christian Watson this year is that when he played, like you said, it was their worst football. But when he started to be like somewhat healthy, all the other guys were really stepping up. Jane Reed, yeah. Octavian Wicks, and Bull Melton all really came on strong. And I think it says a lot that that's just kind of how the season shook out. They looked at their best when he wasn't involved as much. Yes, I, I, it's, it's a very multifaceted grade. It's muddy. It's hard. It's very muddy and it's really hard. And it's, we're going to apply to this to a lot of Packers players for various reasons. The defense to me was horrendous to go through, but <laughs> defense will be next episode. That's why, you, that's why you, you know, fire your coordinator when that happens. Um, but Christian Watson, in, in terms of sp- speaking strictly about Christian Watson, he was as big of a reason why Jordan Love kickstarted the way he did down the stretch, down the second half of the season. As few snaps as he played, 
after Thanksgiving, really. So that's the hard thing about it is that yep. the guy is a, he is a game changing player. He is. You just you want to see him healthy. I want yep. to see him healthy. Yeah. All right, Romeo Dobbs. This is another one. I was very critical of Romeo Dobbs throughout the year. This one, this one is for me, very expectations based. I gave him B. I gave him a B minus. His his very drops that really I... pissed me off. <laughs> they did too. The B. Um, I do think though. Because we have playoff games that are affecting these grades. Yeah. Man. He didn't do much Shut in the playoffs. Down. Cowboys game. Not, what are you talking about? I'm, so, I, 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 I'm sorry. I was talking in the 49ers game. He did like did nothing to remember That's the not the game. only playoff game they played. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> the, the Yes, you, you are right. The, the Cowboys game was a very good game for him. It felt like the 49ers game left a lot to be desired. Right, he had like one catch, one or two maybe. I, I need to check. I believe so. He had four, four. I can't tell because PFF's stupid. He had four catches for eighty-three yards, which is way more than what I remember him having. But regardless, looking at his his receiving grade, I need to find his his drops number because I know it was bad. He had five drops on the year, which is not good, which is not good. He um, had a 61.5 catch percentage. Rookie year, he had a 62.7. 69 catches, 900 yards, nine touchdowns. And that was the name of, Ro- of Romo Dobbs this year. He would make great catches, really awesome catches in the end zone, and really make you go wow. And then he'd double catch so many balls. That would result in incompletions, and it just drove you nuts. Where he had hands yeah. on the ball, just bring it down, and he couldn't. Like, I think if he can solve that issue, because that was the thing, Jordan. In the Cowboys game, he looked like he should. Six for six, 150 yards, a touchdown. Yeah. Like, he caught the ball once every single time. And then you look, watch another game, and it's like... He's got rocks for hands. Yeah. Ugh. I, I I hope he can get it down because if he can like just become a sure handed receiver, he can be very good. I just yeah. need him to be better with his routes. That's my main thing too. He's a little lazy on his route running. And yeah, con- I think in context more... of being an NFL receiver. I should make that very clear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it's it's more of like you want to see, you want to just see him put everything together because he yeah. does have good hands for stretches. He does have great route route running ability. He has the ability to. I mean, he was a favorite red zone target for Jordan Love. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things I like about Romeo Dobbs. In like, if you look at it individually, it's just putting it all together. It's yep. very reminiscent of the entire team. So he started the year. Two touchdowns, uh, 26 yards against the Bears. Uh, 30 yards on two catches from against the, the Falcons. 73 yards on a touchdown um, against the Saints. 95 yards against the Lions. No drops. Then against the Raiders, the Broncos, and the Vikings, he goes 4-30-18 with two touchdowns mixed in there. One in, each, one in the uh, Denver game, one in the Minnesota game. And he had a drop in each one all the way through the, yeah, the Minnesota game. And then you pick it back up with the, um, with the, the Rams game, 36, 31, 53 touchdowns against Pittsburgh and the Chargers. No drops there. One drop against Detroit on Thanksgiving. And then only one more the rest of the year, um, at Minnesota. Like, He's capable of it because he was, wasn't like he wasn't getting a lot of targets. He had at least, except for the week 18 game where he, did he, he must not have played or played little. He only had one target in the Chicago game at the end of the year. But after 
Thanks, remember Karen. he got hit. He went to the hospital. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Um, after the Detroit game, he had four, four, three, four, three catches on five, seven, three, five, six targets. Like he's, it's not like he's not getting the ball. He no. just was playing better. He was catching the ball. And yeah. so that's just my main thing. Be able and just grip the football, Jordan. Just firmly grasp it. <laughs> firmly grasp it. Um, anything else, Romeo? No. Jaden Reed. I gave him an A. A, A minus. I gave him an A. Like we did not even come close to expecting this year out of Jaden Reed. I'd hoped he'd be a, a slot guy of the future. I did not see 820 yards, 830 yards on 68 catches on 97 targets for him and eight touchdowns. I think he has a couple of more rushing touchdowns as well that I'm not seeing at the moment, but let's see if I can pull nine to 12 yards from scrimmage. Thank you. 10 total touchdowns. Yes. Yeah, so had two rushing touchdowns. So like, that's an, an incredible year for a rookie. Like I know offensive rookie of the year was given to um, CJ Stroud and there was a lot of good offensive rookies this year. C.J. Stroud, Jordan Addison, um, Zay Flowers. Interrupt me when you, if you could think of another one. But, like, JSN had Jameer a... Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs. JSN had a good year over in Seattle. But, like, Jaden Reed was instrumental to the team's Puka success Nakua. this year. Puka Nakua. That, yeah, we totally forgot the big one. Um, Jaden Reed was instrumental to this, this Packers offense and their success this year. Um, I forgot about Puka Nakua earlier in their season too, and I was trying to figure out like, is was was Jaden Reed the best rookie wide receiver? No, it was Puka, but I think he has that a pretty was... strong case for second best. <laughs> that was Jordan Addison. I mean, I even, know even Jordan Addison. Like, I think they had similar numbers. I think probably. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come see it for Kirk. Jordan Addison did really well when Kirk Cousins was playing, and then it tailed off after, uh, predictably. Um. No, again, Jaden Reed, I think <laughs> he's just really good. He had – jo- sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Jaden Reed no, – okay. I'm sorry, Jordan Addison had 70 receptions, 911 yards, and 10 touchdowns. So mm-hmm. the same amount of touchdowns, mm-hmm. I guess, receiving. I'm not sure if he had any rushing, but – um, and then, like, 70 more yards, and uh, I think he had fewer catches. So, by 27. No, yeah. I lied. That was, that was targets. Jaden Reed had 68 receptions, so he had two fewer than Jordan Addison. Like, I'll take Jaden Reed's year over Jordan Addison's, frankly. That's just me. I mean, it leads to a playoff victory. That's right. Yeah, it, it, it's... Jaden Reed, is, he's going to be very, very important to this team moving forward. He has all the kind of he has the profile of like a toy that Malafleur can play with like he is kind of their Debo Samuel. I was just going to say I really don't want them to use him like Debo Samuel. No. Not I no I don't I know what I you're saying want, and I yeah. agree. I just hope that's not what they use him as. Well, using Debo Samuel as is normally works unless it's the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, but it's in terms of that dynamic play that you can you know, I'm not saying line him up in the in the backfield. I know that's how you're thinking either, but like he just brings a pop and and an electricity to yep. just touching the football that he just makes plays. And he and he's a small guy, but he plays with a lot of heart and plays bigger than his size because yep. He got walloped a lot this year and showed up on the injury report, and it still didn't really affect his play. No, I think he just has a really good football mind, too. Like, if you remember yeah. the the Bears game, his really long reception was an improvised play. Like, he wasn't supposed to be running yes. up the sideline like that. Like, that's a really smart play for a rookie receiver. And so, I'm all, I'm all about it. I'm He gets an A from me. I'm, I was very happy. Yeah. Dontavion Wicks. What'd you hmm. give him? 
I gave him B minus. Give him a B plus. I was I was very with the specialists, especially besides Josiah Dewar. I was very keen to give them better grades because this offense looked mean very good the second half of the season. Like once they got over their rookie wall plateau or their got through the rookie wall, I think they looked really, really, really good. So yeah, I gave Dante Wilkes a B plus. You give him a B minus. Uh, 39 catches, 581 receiving yards, four touchdowns. Of the I year. have 41 catches on PFF. Well, that is because of playoff. They include playoffs. Ah, that's right. My apologies. Um, feel like he's going to be everybody's breakout player next year. Mm-hmm. And why would, wouldn't it be? Because he has he, all the tools. All the tools, the route running, the separation, great hands. Has to get better. I said, has to tell his body to stay with the, in a game because he left a lot of games and it's like, oh, that Tavia Wicks has a thumb injury. Oh, that Tavia Wicks uh, left with a a cornea injury. I don't know, but like it just it was he left a lot of games that you know. Yep. Anyway, yep. I get it. He just he has a game. Again, we talk about game changing impact between Chris Watson, Jaden Reed, Rune Dobbs has it at times. I think if Don Tavian Wicks can pull it together, he's right there along with him. If not, maybe more so. He might be like the true, like. Whatever you whisper, I did not hear. If not, maybe more so, I said. Then... He might have like the true, like, like wide out, like the complete package. Cause he oh, can... I see what you're saying. Hall in deep passes. He has the big play ability. The, the catch radius also, is amazing. Yes, and he can work within the middle. Like, it's not... I just like the potential of him kind of being able to get what he wants in any kind of situa- situation. I look at that route tree, and he's growing it. He's growing it. Happy Earth Day. He's... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to keep your thing going, but then you, you really threw me off. Um, 41 catches, 600 yards, and five touchdowns. Like, I think he was a revelation this year and really important guy to the offense when Chris Watson went down and Romero Dobbs was inconsistent through the first and middle parts of the year. So, yeah, big B-plus for me. Excuse me. Willie Keith. I'm going to be a little bit of a fuddy-duddy right now. A fuddy-duddy? Fuddy Duddy. I went D. D? Yeah. Am I? Am I? It's just like this is just like you're playing MLB the show or like these these prospect players. He's a prospect. A He's D? an undrafted free agent. Even you, a D. You call them bad? I'm not calling him bad. I you just gave think him a D. His, I'm not saying. I'm just saying of what the season was. It was just like, hey, he had moments. But on the whole, meh, it was fine. He had 15 catches for 125 yards. And a touchdown. And a touchdown. He only had one drop. Two drops, I apologize. Like, you... See, okay. You, okay, no, no, no. Let's, can, you we, giving, can we... You giving Malik Heath a D is telling me you think he played on par or worse than Samari Ture. He had oh, seven. Great Samari. That's my point. But so this is, we have to make this very clear about 45, 50 minutes into this podcast, if not longer. You started an hour, from an hour C. 10. God <laughs> bless it. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of players to go. Oh my God. You started from C. And when to either work, yes, it's like a scale. Yes, C. I was went where from. I, started. I went from the literally the bottom. Like, it's like the, you know, you, you know the game where you had the mallet and then go up. Whack a mole. Like, no, not whack a mole. <laughs> it, it would be you hit the mallet. <laughs> yeah, you had the mallet and you hit the the thing, <laughs> and then it shoots up in the air at the county fair. Yes. Yeah. This the strong so game. The strongman game. So what I'm saying is, I'm. It's this is my grading. It's about this. I know okay, this is the that that makes right sense. Now. No, I. 
<laughs> that makes sense. I understand that point of view. Thank I just, you. I just think it's harsh. I, I'm, I'm fully admitting it right now, and I welcome any criticism. I, in fact, listeners of Talk of the Tundra, they can give me a grade of my grading system, and we could, you know, welcome what people want. Right. No, I just think that, like, against expectations like i had i had done it we probably should nail this down next year when we uh when we do this that uh he was better than expected like i he was a camp darling really showing a lot in the preseason we thought he made, he could, he made the roster mm-hmm. right away we thought he could make a pop and like bring a pop to, to some games being full of piss like he was hot piss i should say um but i just think that <laughs> I, I thought he had a good year for what for what he was for being the sixth receiver on the on the roster, getting a touchdown and 125 yards out of him was pretty good. He made the most of his opportunities. So, all right, bull belt. See, now see here's where we're gonna fight. He had Again. he had three more receptions, 75 more yards. I'm sorry. 125 more yards. I can't do math. And one more touchdown. Man. What did you What did you give him? A C. Okay. That's fine. He didn't play the first 15 games of the year or whatever it was. Right. But you... I don't know. I have issue with your grading system. Because I understand I, that. I, I feel give, like there are going to be a lot of people that have issues with my system. I gave, I gave him a this, B plus. That's fine. I I can understand that. The guy went on a freaking heater. That's what that I'm saying. It was insane. Um, but I also have to factor in that he was not on the team for a large majority of the year. And now look at him. Why is he before next exactly. year? Ooh, your screen's on someone. That's right. Um, TBD on who, I guess. That's right. 18 catches, uh, 244 yards, and two touchdowns. Just a good year from from, from, from Ball Mountain. A guy who like missed a lot of camp due to injury. Um, Missed a lot of the season, I think, due to injury. So that does it for the receivers. we got three players left. Go to the running backs. Start with AJ Dillon. C-plus for me. I went D plus. The stupid... It's hard. It's go ahead. It's hard to shake the in season feeling of being very let down by just expecting a lot average. more. Expecting a lot more when Aaron Jones went down is my biggest thing for this. And it's not like if you look again on the whole. 170 carries, 613 rushing yards, two touchdowns. That's where it, that's not that great. I thought t- yeah. this year was actually pretty good as a passive catcher, like 22 care, uh, 22 receptions on 28 targets, 223 yards. But it, there's just like always, he had 4.2 yards per touch. That's pretty mediocre, if not less than that. Okay. Um, It was just, it's, it's really hard to shake that in season feeling of just being like, "Where's Daisy Dillon? What is yep. <laughs> two to three yard chunk plays?" You know, uh, AJ Dillon played in fifteen games and had four fewer attempts than Aaron Jones and two hundred and fifty fewer yards. Like he, the old, um saying that came through A.J. Dillon's career of him getting better as the season went along was definitely true. He got better as, like, the later in the season, uh, the later in the season holy moly, the later in the season it got, he just got better. But what, yeah. what was really disappointing for me, what, what ultimately gave him a the most negligible positive season I could is because um, he just didn't show me enough when Aaron Jones, when Aaron Jones was out. I think if he plays, like, the back we really needed him to be 
when Aaron Jones was out, this team isn't the seventh seed. They're either winning the division or the fifth seed at at the top of the the uh, the wild card race, yeah. which in the end doesn't really matter. But it felt pretty bad during the losing streak and when this team really needed a, a dynamic rusher and Aaron or an AJ Dillon just wasn't it. Not even dynamic. I, I think it's, I think we were kind of like expecting a running back that can kind of extend drives. And we saw that in fits and starts. It was just kind of like plotting. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Aaron Jones, what'd you give him? I gave a B. You did not come through. I gave him an A. You gave him an A. I gave him an A. Again. He played, where's the snap count that I have right here? He had played vamping 443 snaps on the year. That's only four. AJ Dillon had 494 snaps on the year, by the way. Um, which I was kind of surprised that they were very, they were closer than what it felt like. Mm-hmm. But Aaron Jones, five straight games of 100 yard rushing yards or more, um, was as big of a reason why the Packers was, went to the playoffs. Even the moments, or even the games where the Bears game, however few snaps that he played to start the year, he broke that game open. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, he's the inverse of the Christian Watson year where he had a lot of injuries rob of him or rob him of the ability to play. And when he was on the field, he was as good as he's ever been. So that's where I can just be like, well, I can kind of give you that grace period of like, yeah, you were injured for a lot of it. But when I saw you, by God, we saw you kind of thing like that. I think I was hesitant to give him an A because of the availability as well as just his numbers prior to that stretch. Yeah. Because before, I'm trying to do some quick math here. After the Bears game, like after week one, and then from week two essentially to... The, the Carolina game, he did not have 100 total yards from scrimmage. He had his most rushing yards was against the Rams in, um, in I don't know what week that was, but he had 73 yards. Week on, 9. Week 9. 73 yards, 20 carries, and a touchdown to go with 26 receiving yards. So if my math is right, that's 99 yards um, from scrimmage. It just wasn't there. T- like, in total the middle of the season you are 100 percent right that he is a very large reason of why the packers made the playoffs and had success in the playoffs the way that they did and is the leader in the locker room without a doubt i just after besides the the bears game week one from his coming back from injury which again he was here and there back and forth coming back from his injury nothing to really right home about until the end of the season. And that was why, like, I gave him a B. I think he had a good season to end, to end the year. But to me, an A is, like, you need to have really wowed me. And try not to have the blindness of the last five games of the season. There's still 14 other games that he, that he, that he either missed or played in where 13 of them he either didn't play or was fine at best. Except for the Rams game. That was good. So, say 12. Also, you spoke during that little monologue, and I did not hear you because, uh, for some reason, it just didn't come through. You said blinded by the last five, five games of the season. I said, oh, I'm blinded, baby. I'm blinded. <laughs> blinded by the lights. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like I, I, I love Aaron Jones. That's without a doubt. I just... That was where my, my grade landed for him. So. It's fair. Again, these are not perfect grades. They're not. It was. It's really hard to grade players that play half of 
Just Myers played 1,200 snaps. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about someone that played 443 or whatever Mm -hmm. the number was. Like, that is really hard to just be like, yeah, we're going to put a freaking grade on it. So you're welcome, people. We're doing <laughs> we're doing the the dirty the jobs dirty that Mike Rowe Mike Rowe said. All right, we saved the best for last, folks. And I th- Jordan and I think have very I the way we're talking. <laughs> you're scared right now. I can tell you're I, scared. I am scared. I gave Jordan Love an A minus. What did you give him? I gave him an A minus. <laughs> <laughs> um i think i go ahead again to continue your speech of not being blinded by <laughs> the grading scale <laughs> not being blinded by packers went to the playoffs jordan love is the starting quarterback of the future yada 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 i try to view it objectively and as high uh, that the high or as high the highs were, they were low points. Where we're talking about they got a quarterback, right? And we thought that sincerely. We're not thinking that right now, but we thought about that probably one or two games, maybe two and a half, where just things looked really bad. But Jordan Love. Did really good. <laughs> he's really good. So I'm really excited that he's our quarterback. And the the it's it it's not even the playoff or I guess the Dallas game because the 49ers game was not as strong, obviously, because we're talking about a team that didn't win the Super Bowl. But that second half stretch where he just put all everything together, he didn't make many, many mistakes, whether it was taking sacks. I think there were like three interceptions in the last nine games. Just the it's it's exciting so your argument (laughs) yes your argument for aaron jones was the argument i had for jordan love like oh i know we didn't see the best of jordan love the entire season but holy moly when we did it was really good (laughs) (laughs) and so like i think what what really made it for me is that to expect him to play at a top level or even like average level quarterback for the entire season, like being a first year starter, coming into with a bunch of rookie um, receivers and weapons, like the only true veteran being Aaron Jones as a specialist on this roster, like the youngest receiver group in the NFL by a long shot. This was a lot to overcome. This was a lot to overcome for Jordan Love. A huge learning curve. Mm -hmm. Huge, based on all those factors. And despite all of it, he helped a lot of the rookies put it together. Like, he upped his play, all the rookies upped their play, and they they gelled at the right time and the right part of the season to make a playoff push and win a playoff game against the second seed in the NFC and just throttled them. Like, he made Bo Melton an NFL player. Yeah, he did. 100%. That, like, again, how... I think I probably talked about it at, during the last... The, those last couple of pods of, like, paid Manny making, you know, guys off the street, NFL players, getting rich contracts, all that stuff. Th- those... That type of quarterback. Jordan Love did that in his first year as a starter. Yep. And it's not that... That's not a disservice to Bo Melton because he clearly has NFL traits and skills and... That he got drafted him for a reason. Point. Yes, exactly. But it wasn't that, you know, he has to, there's a lot of ground that he has to make up to get back on an NFL roster. And Jordan Love helped him do that mm-hmm. significantly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Good to. I, I just, I'm very inspired by the last eight games of the season or so, or whatever it was after the losing streak. Um, Basically the Chargers game onward, I believe it was. And so, or the Rams or the Chargers, I forget which one was first. Um, but regardless, like, you could make an argument that he deserved to be, that that middle stretch of the season, that he looked really bad against Las Vegas, looked really bad against Denver, looked pretty poor against the Steelers. Like, he just didn't look good at some points of the season, but, man, 
when he was on, you could tell there's something special within Jordan Love. And that was on display for the entire second half of the season. He was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL the second half of the season. Yeah. Like, I'd say, yep. besides Lamar Jackson, he had probably the second best quarterbacking second half of the season. Again, that got him in the, M- in the NFL playoffs. Exactly. So, A- minus for our quarterback. I uh, am hoping to give him an A-plus next year. Same, but the expectations are higher. Yep. We'll figure it's, it's out. A lot. We'll figure out the uh, the grading system between you and me next year, so we can figure out if we're doing the strongman competition or against expectations. It's all good. I like the diversity of it, though. I mean, we could. It doesn't really matter. It's one pod. It does. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. All right, folks. Do you have anything else to say about Jordan Love, Jordan? Besides that, he's selling fresh no. on Radio Row with his Old Spice sponsorship. Yes. <laughs> I just, I'm excited. No, no, like, I think there, the questions change of like, is he a starter? Can he, it, it's not about, oh, can he succeed Aaron Rodgers and all that stuff. But now it's quickly going to become like, well, is he a Super Bowl winning quarterback? Mm-hmm. It, it changes so fast for quarterbacks. It's not fun. It, I feel like we just kind of talk in circles about the same quarterbacks over and over again because their team may get on a hot streak and they go to the Super Bowl before yours. Um, and you're kind of like, well, is this guy a winning guy or is this guy, a, you know, like, I feel like two is in that perennial zone for the rest of his life because he, <laughs> you know, but I, I just hope Jordan Love avoids that. Yeah, me too. By going, by going to the conference championship or maybe even the Super Bowl as soon as next year. Yeah. I'm right there with you. All right, folks. That does it for us. Nice little grade pod. We'll be back next week with a uh, similar pod for the defense and the special teams. It was difficult for me to do the, to do the defense. <laughs> I'll have to do some more discerning on it as we uh, go into next week. But well, wait till my grades come. Be sure to check out gspn.info for all things the Eurostep Podcast Network. Check out uh, the Bucks pod with Ty and Rohan, Eurostep. Um, and win in six with Jordan and Adam. All-Star break is around the corner this weekend. Um, Damian Lillard and Blake Beasley competing in the three-point contest. Giannis captaining uh, the East. So be sure to check out those Joe pods. Prunty probably Joe maybe Prunty be probably the coaching. All-Star. God, I love it. It's so funny. Please! Um, check out Cruising for a Bruising. Pitchers and Catches reporter today, which is very exciting for Adam and Andrew over at uh, Cruising for a Bruising. Those then, uniforms look fantastic. That's not true. I'm, I'm they, a big fan of the new MLB uniforms. Yep, Huge you fan. are the one person in the entire world. Um, <laughs> I'll start going to Adam and Andrew. I've made time for this as they complete their run-up for um, the Oscars coming up in a few weeks, as well as um, prepare for their list for the 2024 uh, theatrical release season. So that is all we got for you this week folks thanks for tuning in thanks for being patient during our brief hiatus taking a breath after what was a very fun season like i said we'll be back next week with defensive grades thank you for listening and jordan thank you thank you